So I needed to shift our attention a bit from the head to the heart. The journey of the spirit is a migration from your brain to your heart. You can know a lot of things and be aware about a lot of things, but you will not have experience. That you say it authoritatively does not bring you into the reality of the things that is communicated. This is why every time we come before the Lord, it's needful for us to humble ourselves before Him and allow the Spirit of God to bring us into the experience of the things encapsulated in the Scriptures. And this evening I trust the Lord that by the time we are rounding up, many would have been recruited into the armies of God because there's a movement. The Bible says to blow the trumpet in Zion to sound the alarm upon the holy mountains of God. It's possible for you to be in Zion and be at ease. It's possible for you to be in Zion and live for yourself because you think all there is about God is to meet your daily needs. You may not be aware that before God began the intelligent operation of creating and gathering you together, there was a grand purpose in the heart of the Father and you came to fulfill that purpose. Every time you interact with God, it's possible for you to come to God because of what you can receive. And what you can gain from God becomes your motivation. I came to tell you tonight that the men that the Lord wants to work with are not the men that are coming to receive. They are men that are coming to give. The hall of faith is not a place for receivers. It's a place for givers. The Bible says, time will fail me to speak of Gideon to speak of Barak, to speak of Jephthah, to speak of Samuel, of David, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, obtained righteousness, shot the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire. He said they were weak but were made valiant in strength, and they put to fly the armies of the alien. He said some of them were sown asunder. He said men that the world was not worthy for their names to be mentioned. Every generation that God walks and the glory of God is seen is because there are men that are willing to lay their lives down for the purposes of God to find expression through them. We are in a church today that glories in number but not in stature. We are in a church today that our value systems are mundane. Our testimonies, catalogs of testimonies are only on the things that we've received from God. So you see 30 people testify all of them are speaking about mundane things. That means their reality is trapped in this natural world. They have no experience of the things happening in the heavens. And we clap. And the devil is taking over our borders. Some of the lines that were drawn by the fathers through sacrifice have become erased. Darkness dares to encroach our borders because there's no one standing to say restore. It's a time to cry. But there are no sons of order. We define our value by our number. But our strength is not in our number. Our strength is in our spiritual ranking. And tonight, I want to share with us what the burden in the heart of the Father is for this generation. And it will determine the coordinates that we guide our operation in this, in this conference. Just in case you came because you want to receive another prophecy of what God will do next week, you are in the wrong place. And this is not an attempt to talk down on the blessings of God. I will show you how God blesses in times of warfare. In times of warfare, our advantage is not predicated on natural laws. Our advantage is not predicated on universal laws. Our advantage is predicated upon the mysteries that we understand. Give, it shall be given up to you is not enough in warfare because it's a universal law. Even the agents of the devil can use it. The unbelievers can use it. Your advantage is beyond give, it shall be given unto you. There are mysteries that govern the operations of God in times of warfare. I will show you how to grow so that you enter into the economy of wealth transfer, which is the plan of God in the last days. But it's not for everybody. Is for those that are recruited in the in the battlefield. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon his holy mountains. The reason God 
insists that a trumpet be blown is because it's possible for those in Zion to be asleep in the middle of warfare. It is possible for men to get to Zion and yet be carried away by their own business, by their own engagement. So the Lord calls for a holy assembly that a trumpet be blown and the people of God be brought into an awareness of the things that are flowing from the spirit realm. It's not only from the realm of God that reality are flowing from. Before the move of God begins, there is a move of the devil, the move of darkness that precedes the move of God. He said it's a day of darkness, a day of gloominess. He said, but as the light spreads upon the mountain, then a people shall arise. So in the heat of darkness, why it looks as if the devil is winning, God is training his people. This is where the knowledge of God goes beyond lectures in a hall. The knowledge of God becomes dealings that brings you into experiential understanding of who God is and what he is interested in doing. Why darkness precedes the move of God? He say a people are coming. But it's possible for darkness to have preceded, yet the church is asleep. So he say blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon my holy mountains. God has an agenda for the now. And that agenda for the now is a progressive oppression that has started from eternity past and is heading into eternity future. Our participation in it now is the greatest honor that our generation has been granted. The truth is, whether we participate in it or not, the grand plan of God will come to pass. Whether we participate in it or not, deliverance can come from another quarter. But do you know the reason for which you are brought into the kingdom at a time like this? This is why the trumpet must be blasted upon the mountains of Zion. Because a generation can be asleep. A generation can be without discernment. Why God visits his borders? Men can be about their business. Even those that are called to do the hallowed business of the altar can merchandise it and they will not recognize God when he walks through the borders. Isaiah prophesied 700 years before the coming of the Messiah. A Sanhedrin was formed, a council was formed and it became a seat of honor. It became a seat of merchandising the resources of the kingdom. So the council of elders had no understanding of what was going on. In a whole generation, only a handful was aware of what God was doing. The widow that was locked up in the temple, fasting and praying day and night. An old prophet that was only praying day and night. These were the men who were aware that God was coming. Elizabeth that was pregnant in another city was aware, but the Sanhedrin was not aware. And God, it was enough for God to work with three people in a whole generation. That's why I told you our number is not a factor, because the one we are dealing with is an eternal monarch. God can work with three people in a whole generation, and it will not hinder his move. But the question is, if you are not a part of it, what will become your faith in eternity? By what parameters do you judge your value system? If your value system is brought side by side with eternity, will you be counted? By the time the angels show up and the writings are written and the mene mene, take of a scene of your life is quoted, will you be found wanting? He says to blow the trumpet in Zion. To sound an alarm upon this holy mountain. If you have not heard the voice of God, you have not started living. Everything on your nose tree has no value. It has no value added to your life because even the goat has oxygen on the nostrils. What distinguishes you with the lower animals is the purpose of God that your life can give expression to. So he says to blow the trumpet in Zion. If you are weighed in eternity, do you know why you are alive? Why are you here? We came to wake the, the sleeping lions. We came to wake the sleeping prophets. We came to wake the sleeping intercessors. We came to wake the sleeping apostles. We came to wake the sleeping leaders that are not aware 
God is doing something. There is a grand strategy to erode the worship and memory of God from the earth realm. I will just state it quickly as I begin to move a bit faster. There are three major things that constitutes the major agenda of the devil at this time. The strategy of encroachment. Your life and your destiny, your border and your territory is already being bargained. A lot of people are not aware. The strategy of encroachment has three layers. I think that may be the only thing I will touch before I ascend tonight because I may not have all the time. The strategy of encroachment has three layers. First is besiegement. The devil wants to besiege the body of Christ and zero us into everything we are doing only in the churches and be satisfied with it. So we come to the church, we sing, we are excited, we go home, but we are not aware that we are being besieged from every side. What happens is that we will no longer advance the will of God beyond our borders. So the pastor is only interested in his church members. The prayer warrior is only interested in those in his team. And then you are in a way you don't care what is happening outside. Meanwhile, you are being zeroed in on every side. In 2 Kings chapter 6 and chapter 7, the Bible shows us the strategy of encroachment. What it does is that it zeroes you in until you exhaust your resource. And then you will realize that you are empty. The only way we can tackle it. Meanwhile, this encroachment strategy comes in form of terrorism. So you see that in recent times, you will not hear of any missionary going towards the north. You will not hear of any missionary going towards the Middle East. All the apostles, all the prophets, we are either in Lagos, in Portacot, in Abuja, or we are roaming around where the green pasture is. We have become like Lot. Because we no longer judge by the light of the menorah. We judge by the light of the sun. So the same strategy the man in the world uses to survive is the same strategy the believer uses to survive. They tell you you need a certificate, you need a connection with somebody, and then we are dislocated from place to place. It is green pasture that determines our migration. If we continue like that, we will be encroached. The only way we can challenge this strategy is by the baptism of the spirit of martyrdom. Why sit we here until we die? You will not hear this message in the church. This is why we will remain and the sons of the bond woman will come and take over our borders. And a time will come when people will migrate from where they should stand and defend the integrity of God and run away. The same houses and cars you are building, as good as they are, if we don't rise up with the spirit of martyrdom, you will run away from those houses in the shortest period of time. It's God encroachment. Until a generation rises and says, why sit we here until we die? And we take the battle to the enemy at the gate. There will be no hope for the body of Christ. Encroachment. Encroachment can be torn down by the spirit of martyrdom and by the spirit of wisdom. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 14, he said there was in a little village. And in this little village, a great king came and he besieged the land. He said, but in this village, there was a little poor man whom through his wisdom delivered the land. This is not you trying to think how to survive. This is you connecting to heaven and receiving the counsel of God for the now. Knowing what to do part time. And through that wisdom, we dislodge the devil. But we are the men that we challenge the enemy at the gate. Every time we give, we give because there is something we want to receive. And this is why we only give our leftovers so that we can grow in abundance and lavish it on our pleasure. But in Luke chapter 12 verse 20, the Bible looked upon the foolish man who had gathered his pan and he said, now my soul can rest. He said, oh you fool. Many have the verdict of fools because they live for their immediate gratification. Everything we do is to fill our palms so that our soul can have pleasure. You see the believer giving, he's giving to receive. You see the girl praying, it's because she wants to get married. You see the brother praying, it's because he's looking for a job. The moment she gets married, prayer ends. The moment he gets a job, prayer ends. That is because our indoctrination has taught us how to nurture the flesh. 
everything we do is to fill our palms. There are no men that can challenge the enemy at the gate. The Bible says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon the holy mountain. Where are the martyrs? Jesus raised his disciples. At least the 12 of them that were mentioned, all of them died. What kind of discipleship program is that? It is those that bear the burden of the kingdom. The greatest honor is in the kingdom is to come to a point where you are willing to die for the will of the king. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 17, he told them, he said, not many days. Some of you will be imprisoned. You will be put to prison for 10 days. He said, but be faithful unto the end. For I will give unto you the crown of life. If you have the crown of life, why not give unto me to survive? Because there is a life after death. Blow the trumpet in Zion. If there is a need for the body of Christ to rise up and take the battle to the enemy at the gate, how many of us will be standing? This is why we need to hear the trumpet in Zion. We are men of appetites. We come to church, we cry before the Lord, but we need another kind of baptism. The baptism of the extra generation. If I perish, I perish. Second strategy, infiltration. Sin and iniquity have become a part of us. You try to deal with matter of sin, they say you are a legalist. We teach forgiveness without judgment. We teach mercy without judgment. We teach repentance without judgment. So we have become a people that have accommodated sin. But for the son, he said, because thou loved righteousness and hated iniquity, thy God have anointed thy head with the oil of gladness above thy pears. The reason why we talk, we have no resort, is because iniquity has become part of our existence. So our internal energy is depleted. The men that God anoints with the oil of gladness are the men that love righteousness and hate iniquity. If you check a church population of 10,000, you will be amazed that more than 9,000 are actively in sin. And the pastor have learned how to manage them. The guy in the choir impregnates the, the sister, but is interested in the name of the church. He knows to manage. But Paul will say to cast such to the devil, so that the body will be befitted, but the soul will be saved. A church that have accommodated iniquity is an infiltration strategy. This is why we can no longer pray. Because we have accommodated sin. Internal energy is low. You can sit on Facebook for 12 hours. But you cannot sit on the scriptures for 30 minutes. Internal energy is low. You don't know that every picture you see was sponsored, was paid for. Because they know how the soul operates. The moment you interact with it is planted in your soul. And it will remain there and make it impossible for you to ascend. I'm not talking about demons. I'm not talking about principalities yet. I'm just talking to you how that the cultures can become the snare of a generation. And because the body of Christ is not taught the position of standing, we accommodate all of these things, garbage of all sorts. The person leading the choir, if they tell you what he did before he came up, you'll be amazed. Infiltration. In the days of the apostles, the Bible says no one dared join himself to the company of the apostles infiltration the reason few men can turn their world upside down is because they were born in how do we deal with the plague of infiltration is by the coals of fire if you are not on fire you have no message for your generation the gospel at this time is not intelligent exegesis the gospel at this time is for those that are clothed with the garment of fire. He maketh his angels spirits, but his ministers flames of fire. Because until the budging dimension of the word of God comes back to the church, sin will be accommodated. And if sin is accommodated, our prophets will be sleeping. Our intercessors will be fornicating. Our wise men will be gambling. Because we have accommodated sin. And most of us are there. How do we think we can be part of what God is doing? So he says to what? Blow the trumpet in Zion. You think your dress is not a sin. You don't have understanding. You don't know that you are not just sinning. You have become an agent. Infiltration. 
the reason the prophet has fallen is because you was a, you became a seductive agent. You don't know that you are a chalice of demons. You don't know the energy you emit into the territory. Gathers people and then talk, dirty talk, becomes the normal language. Infiltration. Emitting negative energy into the territory. And then it chokes everywhere. Infiltration. It says to blow the trumpet in Zion. Thought strategies suffocation. Using the powers that be to institute policies that makes it difficult for even those who are willing to, to raise their voice. The cure to suffocation is influence. I'm saying all of these things so that you understand the balance. When we talk about money and influence, you will understand where we are coming from. It's not for gratification. It's not for systematization. It's not for gain. It's because influence is a weapon in the last day. If there are no men of influence to push the powers that be backward, a point will come when it will become a crime to utter your voice. This is why God will put influence upon people. Because there is an enemy that needs to be pushed back. There is a government that needs to be challenged. Not by guns, but by spiritual influence. When you speak, the Bible said, I put my dread upon the people. Men of influence. And these men must take it upon themselves to mentor generations to come into the same. So when the fathers are taking off the scene, there will be no gap that the enemy will exploit. This is why those of you who insult the fathers, you have no understanding of the strategy of the kingdom. There must be partnership between the young and the old so that we travel on the corridor of influence. A time will come when it will become one of the major determining factors. What is God doing? God is raising an army. There are three major quadrants that men will function from. The first are missionaries. Listen, what I'm sharing with you, as you begin to pray, you are going to find yourself having these buttons. It is not stupidity. It's not foolishness. It's the move of the spirit coming upon your life. The move of the spirit is not people falling down and crying. The move of the spirit is the government of the Holy Spirit exercised upon the souls of men to the degree that they are willing to give up their will for the will of the Father to find expression. That was what happened to Jesus in Gethsemane. Where your will is clearly defined, but you are able to put your will aside for the will of the Father to find expression. God will raise missionaries. Men that he equips with fire to take the gospel to territories that are forbidden. You will see many as you begin to pray. There will be hunger for souls. Not fame, not popularity. Hunger for souls. The hunger that can make you to take the gospel to America. And God can tell you, leave America to Mozambique. And your part is Mozambique. You can take the gospel anywhere there are souls. A hunger will come upon this generation. Men will pray for souls to be won to the kingdom. Men will pray for arms to be dropped. Men will go even into the Islamic world and bring Jesus to them one on one. Not afraid of what can come upon them. That's why I told you God will baptize us again with the spirit of martyrdom. I travel with my friend Victor. There are times when we go through borders, crisis borders, where there is no checkpoint. All the army officers run away. You are moving, you are seeing dead men. And attacks coming every day. When you get there, you will know whether you love souls or his fame and honorarium you are pursuing. I'm saying this so that we will be aware. Because some of us are praying now. The picture we are seeing is our followership. We are 10,000 people we gather and we will come. Somebody carries our Bible and we pocket our hands and we share the word of God and say, You know, the Lord is good and um, the message is message enduring forever. That's not what God wants to do. <laughs> oh, the Lord is beautiful, you know, last night. Um, what? No. Missionaries. Men that they are part of navigation is where souls are. Is there, if there is a soul in Pakistan, their way is Pakistan. And God will equip them with grace. 
grace that will confound the enemy. You will speak things we have, but men cannot gain say. Grace over territorial influences. They can speak and the power of territories will be broken. Did you study your Bible in Acts chapter 8 from verse 5? It says, Philip went to Samaria. He preached Christ there. The city was full of joy. Seeing that they that were held down by the spirit of power had gone up and demons screamed out of the people. Why? There was an influence. I was talking with Mama this afternoon and were discussing how that a man can bewitch a whole city and bring a whole city under rebellion. A whole city. The Bible said in Samuel 15, 22 that weak rebellion is as the scene of witchcraft and stubbornness as idolatry. A whole nation can be besieged by one man. But when the missionaries rise, they will break territorial influences. They will enter into territories and shut down the power of immorality. They will enter into territories and shut down the powers of witchcraft. They will enter into territories and shut down installations of darkness because they are wired to carry Jesus to the ends of the earth. Many will be caught into this quadrant. There is a quadrant of intercessors, cave dwellers. Some of you will have burdens for prayer. It will be so intense that nobody can explain. It will be foolish when you explain your life to people. God can take you to a place to tarry for many years. You have no gospel. But the beauty is that it's an army. Everybody may not be on the stage. Some may be at the cave. But they are the people that makes what happens on the cave happen. The Bible said in Colossians 4.12, it said, Epaphras is one of you. A born servant of Christ, laboring fervently for you in prayers that you will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So the reason the church in Colossus prospered was because Epaphras was praying. On earth, he may not be an honorable man, but the Bible says, for such, the word is not worthy for their names to be mentioned. These are the men that the angels will clap for. Because everything they did was from the purity of their heart. Most of you will graduate from schools and God will send you to caves for prayer. It is because there is an urgency of what God wants to do now. Most of you, God will sentence you to prayer for many years. Not two years, not three years, for ten years. But if such things don't happen, the church will be overrun. The reason why we are standing is because men labored before we came. And the reason why the church will stand to the next generation is because we must labor. And one of the areas of labor is the area of intercession. What do you do when you intercede like that? You generate energy to open territorial operations and make it possible. Many will pray and the gospel will, the gate of Afghanistan will open. Many will pray in Africa, the gate of India will open. You will not understand the economy. It's a move of the spirit. This is why most of you will pray, you may not have a car. You may not have anything to call your own. But in heaven you will be mighty. These matters are not doctrine. They are consecration based. And the voice of God is what will determine the compass of your navigation. And if you don't hear the voice of God, you will be dislocated from your pattern. And no matter how big you are in time, in eternity you'll be small. This is the plague that is going on in the church. Many are not taught the strategy of heaven. We think Christianity is all about our, our needs and desires. Christianity has become about gain. The Bible says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind that suppose gain is godliness. The Bible said, if you come to a point where you think Christianity is gain, you are a corrupt mind. You are of a corrupt mind. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. I'm telling you this because most of you think that ministry is a black jeep with tinted glass. Most of you think ministry is a private jet. The body of Christ will not stand like that. They are men that will bear the burden. They cave dwellers. 
and the third set of people are the merchants the sons of consolation that God will grant deep understanding in wealth creation and walking the corridors of influence but they must be dead men because they will know that what God gives to them is not for pleasure it's a trust that God can make demand any day any time this is why somebody may never be known but he will be in a faraway country sponsoring the gospel in Africa you don't know what he knows in the kingdom you are not equal you that come to God every day to take for yourself and your family you are not equal the reason Rehan Bonke turned Africa upside down for Jesus was because they are ministers ministering to the needs of the ministry from the US I was in passing on the torch in Lagos and 800 partners came from all around the world I was amazed to see that people came from China our gospel become for wine and bread we are mundane we are children the Bible said the heir so long as he's a child differed nothing from a servant even though he be Lord of all so the father will place him under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father when you come into maturity and you understand that there is a burden in the heart of the father missionaries cave dwellers and sons of consolation this generation must rise for the move of God to find expression in the next 10 minutes I will show you how does God raise this generation first is by the protocol of death no man of the flesh can do the business of the kingdom. It's not possible. The kingdom has always been carried on the shoulder of dead men. Only the blood of men can carry the kingdom from one generation to another. The kingdom is not an intelligent message. The kingdom is a voice of conviction. The kingdom is not an exegetical communication of the counsel of God. The kingdom is a voice of conviction echoed through generations. Only men that have died to the tendencies, the desires of the flesh can understand the language of the kingdom. You can never be part of it. Even if you join yourself fleshly, over time you will be sieved out. Because if you travel for a while, you will see that there is no gain here. Some of us came here as guest ministers, but we sold into what is happening. It's kingdom. If you don't accept the verdict of death, you can never be an agent of kingdom advancement. You can know all the doctrines of the Bible. But I can assure you today that some of the apologetic scholars in Islam, they know the Bible more than you. It's a voice of conviction. The depth of your conviction is a function of the depth, the level of depth you have accommodated to flesh. Every time we refuse to die, we are alive to ourselves. And every time we are alive to ourselves, the voice of God is far from our borders. The burdens of God are too deep and heavy for a man that is carnal. Some people come pray overnight for anointing because they want to make impression. You think God will invest such a hallowed reality or resource to satisfy your appetite, to prove a point to your neighbors that you too you are anointed. You don't know what God is doing. Many labor because they want to have popularity on the internet. So you think what God is doing is to give you a name on the internet. You don't know what is happening. Until we die, we cannot see the path of life. Life begins from death. Only men who travel into the grave can see the breath of eternal life. Your strength will always receive the strength of God. So when he comes, he will first of all kill you. This is not a dispensationally based reality. This is how God operates with men. It is there in the Old Testament. It is there in the life of Christ. It is there in the New Testament. Abraham, get thee out of thy country. Out of thy kindred. Out of thy father's house. To the land that I will show you. You don't know why God called Abraham out of his father's house. You have no idea. Abraham's grandfather, Nahor, was one of the princes of Nimrod. So he was of a royal clan. There are people that brag with their name. My family is my name. Have you not seen people that show up and they want you to introduce them by all means? And people say, are you connected to the vice president? For such people, God will say what? Get thee out of thy family. Because your strength is on your family. 
everything that constitutes your confidence, God will break it. That's what death to flesh is about. Paul was a learned luminary. His pride was his knowledge. Nobody could outclass him in his realm. And God came and broke Paul to a level where Paul will come and summarize Christianity. In Philippians 3 verse 3, say we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit, rejoicing in Christ Jesus, having no confidence in the flesh. It no longer matters whether I'm a lawyer or not. What matters is that I'm able to discern spiritually. It's not an Old Testament reality. It's how God deals with men. Everything that is your confidence, God will break it. See, God is the maker of men. But when kingdom becomes into sphere, that's when you will see the God that breaks men. Because there are many men that will lean on their staff in order to be a prince. I know people <laughs> that their very lives were threatened because God wanted to bring them to the kingdom. This is not doctrine. This is consecration. This is not doctrine. This is destiny. This is kingdom. Get thee out of thy father's house. Most of you will get out of your father's house. A friend of mine, while we were serving, Father was so rich, he could call any director anywhere. They had already planned for him to work with Eric upon passing out from NYC. Two weeks to passing out, his father died. And all his father's friends stopped calling him. This is a guy that doesn't even know when they pay their allowance. He will come and say, ah, they don't pay you now. How far now? Ah, well done. Now they enjoy this week. Oh. Eh? He doesn't know what allowance is. They allow it that you, you are waiting one week to allow everybody. You are, people are even taking credit so that they will pay. The guy doesn't know when they pay allow it. He's just waiting to leave and he, he's already seen himself in the, in the airline. Two weeks, the father died. He now came back to learn the syllables of death. Because the Bible says, woe unto him that put his trust in the arm of flesh. Kingdom men are not confident in flesh. They have died to it. Jesus the word of God. The Bible introduced him in John chapter 1. He said in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of man. So Jesus God, Jesus creator, Jesus life, Jesus light. Yet no kingdom in view. 30 years a carpenter. When God came, he began to teach him the way of death. He said, go to the Jordan and be baptized. And the Bible said, Jesus will come to John. And John will say, no, I'm not worthy to untie the latchet of your sandal. And he says, suffer it to be so for now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. There's a kingdom in view. I am not violating the law of the spirit. The law of the spirit says, without every contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. But suffer it to be so for now. Thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And the moment he was baptized... Father, we turned that from heaven and said, Behold, my beloved son, kingdom have begun. From that point, it was wrong to call him a carpenter. Heaven turned that. Behold, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Do you mean you were not pleased before? Death is what brings the approval of God. As if it was not enough. Matthew 4, 1. The spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And it will be there. The lust of the eyes will be tempted. The lust of the flesh will be tempted. The pride of life will be tempted. And Jesus will come down and say, The prince of this world come to me and find it nothing. And the moment he came down, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile. The people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. When he was born, he was called the light of the world. But the light cannot shine until he dies to flesh. They that sat in the shackle of death, behold, a great light is sprung forth. I know most of you at the age of seven, Jesus appeared to you and told you you are an apostle. A friend came to me and said, God appeared to him and said, he's the apostle Paul of this generation. I said, well, Paul died daily. <laughs> it is not the appearance of Jesus that will make you an apostle. You will die daily. Are you ready? Three weeks later, he went back and joined us now. <laughs> Our generation don't understand the language of suffer it to be so for now. 
I thought Christianity was about oratory. While I was in the university, I could gather the whole people and then I spoke like a philosopher. You know, you lower your voice. Discipline is the soul of an army. It makes more number formidable. It procures success to the weak and esteem to all. George Washington, 1871. There are people say, hey, hey, hey. So when I came, I thought I would carry the microphone and start philosophy. And when I started pressing it to God, I was going home and light came out of the wall. And he called the name of the lady I was dating. He said, leave her. You will see my power in your life. I said, wait. The last time I checked, you will receive power. After not many days from now, when you receive the Holy Ghost, I have power. What do you mean you will receive power? <laughs> Experience in the kingdom is a function of death. The reason why you cannot be part of the army is because you are holding to flesh. And before God commits anything to you, you will die. He's the one that kills it and makes it alive. If God doesn't kill, he will never make a life. Because the verdict of the old creation is death. Even Jesus had to die. Because Jesus' life is the pattern for humanity. So he showed us the way to kingdom relevance. He showed us the way to kingdom service. The Greeks came to him. John chapter 12. And you will say, ah, this door of international ministry that God told me. So this is the time. You will first of all go and shower and wear a suit. And then you will come out like an apostle. And Jesus will say, except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and die. It abides alone. Kingdom relevance is a function of death. Nobody can be in the army without the badge of death. Everybody in the army of God has a badge. It's called death. And if you don't have that badge, you are not part of the army. If you like, Jesus will appear to you at the age of seven. Your flesh will disqualify you. Because he will fight it until he kills it. We are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit. That's a lawyer talking. Rejoicing in Christ Jesus, having no confidence in the flesh. That you still have confidence in something in the flesh means you don't know the Holy Ghost. Before you truly know the Holy Ghost, your flesh will be destroyed. Everything you have in God will not manifest until flesh is destroyed. Jacob was the custodian of the Abrahamic blessing, the only existing one on earth. God could not use him until he was broken. Then God said as a prince, thou hast power with God and have prevailed. Just in case you have any perception that God wants to use you in the last day, you must accept the verdict of death. Everything we'll be sharing in this conference will touch and border around death in one way or the other. Over time, the picture will be made clearer. I'm just showing you the path of navigation. When you die, then you begin to grow in eternal life. No man grows in eternal life unless he has first of all accepted the verdict of death. Because everywhere flesh is alive, the life of God can never be allowed to grow. This is why God will kill you. Paul say, I die daily. I die daily. There are many things to die to, I assure you. He said, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As you go higher, he will show you. As you go higher, he will show you. I thought I was dead to anything money. Until God show up and say, if you go on campus, don't receive an honorarium. Meanwhile, 80% of my meeting is on campus. I now realize that the gospel is not English language. At every level, there will be death. And God will do it to try your heart. Because reward is based on the quality, the texture of your heart. It's not the same commandment he gives to another. But maybe there is something lingering somewhere in my, in my heart about money as a motivation. He said, I the Lord, I test the reins to give unto every man as his way should be. When you see men ranked in this kingdom, go and check. They have many scars that you can't see. There are stories we reveal to you, they are scars. Nobody begins from a private jet. Before you look at the private jet, go and check your track record. They are still holding to the tendencies of flesh. And you think... Uh, you will be graced into kingdom. <laughs> you reign. You reign. You reign. The way you guys are looking at me. It's like I'm speaking Swahili. You reign, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. 
The East is bound with the power of religion, the power of pleasure, and the power of pride. You don't die, you can never fulfill the will of God, no matter how anointed you are. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. We didn't come to tell you that, hey, Peter, God wants to use you as an apostle. Then he said, yes, when I was seven years old, an angel appeared to me. You are a joker. Nobody. <laughs> hey, your name is Matthew. I see in the spirit you are a prophet. Then he said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. God has told me seven times. If you don't accept that, you will never be used. Even Jesus died. You are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, Kados. You are mighty on your throne. When you die to flesh, then you begin to grow in Christ. The goal of God is for every one of us to come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. The fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. For this cause, God can afford to create a rescue strategy. So when he was going to heaven, the Bible said he ascended to heaven. He came back after 40 days, for 40 days rather, and he was instructing the disciples about the kingdom. They had seen the resurrected Christ. They were born again. But kingdom is more important. Because the reason salvation was necessary is because there is an agenda. So even though he resurrected, they saw him and believed. He came back for 40 days. Acts chapter 1, verse 2 and 3 giving them commandment by the Holy Spirit, teaching them about the kingdom. Even Philip that got the whole city full of joy, in verse 12 of Acts chapter 8, the Bible says he began to teach them about the kingdom. That is when early uh, Simon the sorcerer was revealed. There are many sorcerers among us. If all we have is salvation and the promises of God, there will be sorcerers on the altar. When kingdom comes, when death is spoken, then the sorcerers can be revealed. Because they are sorcerers in the body of Christ. You cannot discover Simon the sorcerer until you bring kingdom. And kingdom begins with death to flesh. That's when you will see the man pursuing the anointing for gain. You can't find the sorcerers until you begin kingdom. Death. That's what recruits men into the move of the spirit. Every man that accepts the verdict of death is ready to grow into the fullness of the Christ. And it is the measure of Christ you have that will determine your assignment in this kingdom. Who has believed our report? Unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who shall declare his generation? I told you the gospel is not English. It's a vocalization of conviction born in the spirit. The measure of Christ you carry is what is communicated in your words. A man who is not full of Christ has no message. This is why we must grow. And growth in the spirit is deliberate. It doesn't just happen by coincidence. It's deliberate. There are many kingdom strategies put in place to ensure for your growth. I will show you two of them and we'll begin to pray. One of them is prayer. You are mighty on your throne. Marahazavori atavask. If you are not praying now, you are not part of what God is doing. Tell your neighbor. I know you are in church, but if you are not praying, you are not part of what God is doing. Our advantage now is not our title. It is the mystery that is available to us in Christ. That's why the Bible said these things are hid for all ages, for our glory. Every time we begin to truly grow in Christ by prayer, we begin to gain access to mysteries. I want to show you some of the mysteries that will make us prevail, even if the devil likes it or not. If you call the name of Jesus, even a principality will fall down. And if you call that name and you are summoned to Hades, even the devil will fall down from his throne. So the name of Jesus is that powerful. But there are strategies that the devil manipulates into the systems of the world to make us a slave, even though we have the greatest weapon. This is why we must grow and know how to negotiate mysteries. And I will show you some of the mysteries we come into by prayer. 
Because if you don't pray, you will think quoting the scripture will make a difference in your life. We quoted it for a long time. We went to Bible schools, came out, and we prided ourselves in the fact that we could quote many scripture on any subject, but we had no experience. We now understood that even the scripture we quoted were doorways in the spirit. Every scripture you know is an access point into a dimension in Christ. So if you want to grow, something must happen to bring alive the capsules of scriptures and to make it a reality in your life. And that is why, that is when we embrace prayer, not just as an act of reaching God, but as a lifestyle for survival in the kingdom. As a tool of eternal relevance, we began to pray and we prayed until we got to a point where without prayer we could do nothing. Because we now realized that the gate of the spirit realm is locked away. Only men of prayer could open it. I now realize that even the name of Jesus on the lips of a man could not achieve much if he doesn't have conviction in that name. And I saw that conviction is in the place in the spirit. There's a place you get to in the spirit that everything you say become a reality to you. There are certain things you don't say. Even if you think it, you emit energy and it begins to change things. So I now discover that, oh, the corridor of eternity is only available to men that pray. So the first thing that God taught me about prayer is that only men of prayer can host God in their soul. All of us have God in our spirit, but the measure of God we have in our soul, which is a function of our spiritual growth, can only be possible when we can wait in the presence of God. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31, he said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he weary? He giveth power to the faint, and unto them that have no might, he increases strength. He said, even the youth shall be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. That means in the ranking of mortality, the strongest among mortals are young men. But he said, compared to the immortal monarch of Zion, even the young man is like an epileptic agent. The only way a young man can sustain a stature that is consistent with the dimensions of God is when we, he masters the technology of downloading God. And he said, they that wait upon the Lord. They mount up with wings like the eagles. They begin to run and they don't faint. They walk, they are not weary. Why? Because the everlasting God fainted not. Neither is he weary. So when you begin to pray, something begins to happen to your soul. The dimensions of God become your reality. That is the dimension that God wired into man before the fall. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 that the names that Adam called the animals, that was the name that was. That is because in the chapter of heaven, all the animals before they were created were already named but there was something about the unfallen man he could tap into the frequency of heaven and he knows what god did even when god slew him and he was asleep and god created a woman the name god called the woman was woman the guy woke up and said you shall be called woman because he operated as a frequency but what the fall does is that the fall brings you down from the realm of god but it's a day that wait upon the lord they begin to mount up with wings they begin to mount up with wings like the eagles they run, they are not weary. They walk, they don't fight. What happens is that the immortal dimensions of God begins to enter their chambers. That's when a stammerer can come and speak and the night turns red. The stammerer can come and speak and quails fill the land. The stammerer can show up and say, have no respect unto their prayers. If I be a man of God, a land will open and swallow you up. And even God in heaven will obey the voice of a stammerer. Why? Because there's a download. Joshua shows up and he said, let the sun stand upon the mountains of Ajalo. Let the moon retain upon the valleys of Gibeon. And he said, the sun did not make haste to go down. In the day that God hearkened to the voice of a man, he said, that day have never existed and it will never be. Why? Because a man mastered the intelligence of download. You can walk into that place as a vulnerable man. When you show up, the Bible will say, they wish not. He said, Moses wish not that his face shone like the sun. Because he had stayed in the presence for long. And the Moses that came out is a God. That guy is no longer a mortal. There is something that happens. His weaknesses are swallowed up because he has stayed in the present. When he walks among men, he says, God, you can see him, but his tendencies are like the immortal spirits of Zion. Why? The
intelligence of town no. there is something that happens to you and you can walk through the terrorists and they will drop their guns they will not know what is going on it's called download david said by the hand of god i ran through a troop by god i leaped over a wall that's not a man that's a downloaded version of god he has become like the invisible god that is in the spirit and he taught the same thing to his warriors the bible said i don't need the extract once upon a time he fell upon the sword and he slew 800 men that's not a man he said eliezer the son of Toto, he fell upon a spear and he challenged the garrison of an army. That's not a man. He said, Ashana, the son of Akai, he took one of his sword and he defended the land. That's not a man. It's called a Taulu. Your name can be Kenna. Wait in prayer. A Kenna will come out and he will become like a God among men. That's why he told Moses, Behold, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. It doesn't matter if you are his camera. It doesn't matter if you came from a poor background. It doesn't matter whether you are educated or not. How much download do you have in your spirit? They that wait upon the Lord. They mount up. They mount up with wings. They mount up with wings. They mount up with wings. Like the eagles. As I speak now, the hand of God is coming upon people. So that they can mount up. So that they can mount up. Paros! Hey, lete, hey, lete, hey, lete. Oh, me le kazuswa. I see the wings of the spirit is spreading, so that man can mount up, so that man can mount up. Eliasa, the son of Toto. The Bible said Philip went to Samaria. Only one man. He didn't need a band of intercessors. He didn't need a band of prophets. There was something. There was a download. There was a download. How much of God do you carry? The Assyrians will overrun us. The sons of the bond woman will overrun us unless men of download appear on the mountains. So it says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon his holy mountain. We are not weak. The least among us can become as strong as David. But the intelligence is the intelligence of Tanu. How much of God do you have? Can I tell you something? By prayer, by prayer, you can manipulate your seasons. You may be destined by God to become a prophet in 2020. But begin to pray. Something will happen. You will change the equation of time. You can draw time closer. The same way demons can shift your destiny backward. You can by prayer draw it closer. And the cast of others. Homers! Ah, hey! of Jesus. Listen, sit down. I want to show you some things. I started teaching in Obamosha and the power of God broke out. But sometimes we need to show you this truth. So when you go to prayer, your focus is not bread and wine. When I go to pray, I'm searching the spirit because what I'm looking for is download. If that download is enough, I can walk to my enemy. Israel was in captivity in Egypt for 430 years. But the Bible said that God spoiled the Egyptian. He gave favor to the Israelites and they spoiled the Egyptian. How can a 430 year slave walk to the master and say, Give me your gold, give me your jewelry? There's download. There's download. So when you speak, you speak with the tongue of an angel. When you show up, it is the fragrance of Christ. There are no downloads. There are no men that can download God. Come on, we need downloaders if we must fight the war of the last day. The second strategy of prayer that brings men to spiritual good is what we call 
spiritual networking 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 do you see this place i'm standing the reverend david ogoeli stood here many years ago if i can ascend to the spirit and find where he stood i can operate by the energy that he operated here did you not study about john the bible said he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth he was not in the wilderness because it's a palatable place to live john needed to come in the spirit of elijah so there is a place he must hide himself as he stood there a point came where the man that went to the wilderness is john but the man coming out is elijah the difference is 800 years but time is no longer a factor because john entered into an eternity economy and on the strength of that economy he can download elijah into his day you can download moses into your day you can download enoch into your day so you go the, the people the sons of the bond woman arrest you but by the spirit you enter where enoch stood and you can command by location and all of you will escape with the enemy into the police station it's a strategy in the spirit realm our advantage is mysteries mysteries did you not read about paul he said to daniel he said you seal the book but paul came he didn't bother he said when he pleased god to reveal christ in me i conferred not with flesh and blood i went to arabia paul entered where daniel stood with god and he said i was brought into the fellowship of the mystery and the same thing that daniel saw and sealed the book paul came and opened it he said i received a grace to make men see that thing that Daniel locked away, I came to unlock it. It's a place in Zion. Jacob told Reuben, he said, you shall not prosper. As unstable as water, you shall not prosper. But Moses came, he entered the spirit, and he said, let Reuben live and not die. There's a place we can enter, and we can begin to fight with the strength of many. If Benson Itahosa was able to challenge Islam, you can challenge Islam. All you need to do by spiritual networking, enter the mountains of Zion. In Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 4, he said the mantle of many warriors is on the ear of the city of David. You can enter there and wear the garment of David and come down. It's called spiritual networking. Only men of prayer understand. That's why Jesus himself in Matthew 17 verse 2 on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elias came. And they were encouraging him about what he would do in Jerusalem. Spiritual networking. John was in the Isle of Patmos. In the last day. Weary and depleted. But he said I was in the spirit. Patmos is not my problem. I will remain in the spirit. And as he was in the spirit he heard a sound. Like the voice of a trumpet. And his brothers came from heaven. He wanted to worship the angel. And he said no. Don't worship me. I am like one unto you. Networking. You can enter the spirit realm, and today your name is Adora, but you can connect with Captain Kuman in the spirit, and you begin to operate dimension, and they don't understand. It's a dimension in the spirit. You can connect with Ami Semper McFassie. It's a dimension. You hear a story of Francis of Assisi, and by prayer you can connect with him. Why? You have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to an innumerable company of angels, to the spirit of just them made perfect. This is why I don't pursue men anymore. I know that I can form a family in the spirit. Many years ago, in the place of prayer, the hand of God entered my room and he carried me out of my body, took me into years backward, and he showed me the life of Pastor Chris Oakilome. And he said, You are of his tribe. So I don't pursue men. Anybody you want to find, look for him in the spirit. You will find him there. Ah! of prayer you don't know the powers of prayer the third thing that prayer does is called divine administration people can be persecuted in afghanistan pray in nigeria don't bother pray the bible said the prayers of the saints it ascend to heaven as others and they are stored up in golden fires then the angels of god mix them with others so somebody can be crying in afghanistan pray here pray here the reason God will appear 
to the person in Afghanistan is because you are praying. He was not violating the laws of the spirit. Somebody is praying. Did you not read about Paul? He was on his way. The moment he entered Damascus, Jesus showed up. Paul was in Jerusalem. Jesus did not appear. But when he entered Damascus, Jesus showed up. Why? Ananias had secured the borders. So Jesus cannot allow Paul to enter Damascus. He showed up. And Paul was struck blind. Jesus appears to a man and he tells Paul, go into the city. You will be told what to do. It was Ananias that mobilized me. Even Jesus can be mobilized by men. Intelligence of prayer is deeper than bread and wine. The next time you pray, look unto the hills from whence cometh your help. Ah, he said they looked unto him and their faces were radiant and they were not ashamed. One man can be stronger than an army if you understand the intelligence of networking. If you understand the intelligence of spiritual mapping. If you understand the divine administration of securing territorial integrity by prayer. The 14 prayer doors is reconfiguration. This is where warriors rise. This is where priests rise. This is where kings rise. This is where merchants rise. Because all of us can start and believe as believers. But when we enter Zion, then they begin to read to you the scroll of your destiny. That's why five of us will be praying. But in heaven, you are a prophet. I'm an apostle. He's a businessman. He's a merchant. Only in the spirit can reconfiguration take place. That's where warriors are born. It is in Zion that you find Shaman, the son of Age. It is in Zion that you find Eliasa. The son of God. There is a dimension of you that can slay 800 men. But come to Zion. Come to Zion. Come to Zion. That's where the spirit of just men is made perfect. You don't know your dimension. They can call you Rahab the prostitute. Come to Zion. When you come to Zion, you can become the progenitor of Jesus Christ. They can call you Chinere, the club dancer. Come to Zion. That's when you will know that you are a priest. And matters of territorial legislation will be committed to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we will not stand until Deborah opens her voice. Usuka will fall until Jinjere opens her voice. Men call her blind, call him blind Batibos. But Jesus calls him, Your eyes open. Men will call you names, but there is a white crystal in heaven. The Bible said, He will give you a name that no man knows. So they call Peter Simon, they read. But he came, he said, You are rock. You are rock. You are rock. You are not a reed. You are not a reed. You are rock. They call him Abraham. Azum father. But he came to Zion. And they say you are Abraham. The father of kings. Come to Zion. That's when you will realize. That you are a feeble. But in the spirit you are a warrior. That's when you will realize. That on earth you are feeble. But in Zion you are a prophet. That's when you will realize. That on earth they called you a liar. But in Zion you are a prophet. Only for the coals of fire to touch you. And then your dimensions open. People will look at you and say, eh, is this you? No, you didn't know me. The man you saw was the badge the world gave me. I have entered Zion. I came out as a warrior. I came out as a prophet. I came out as a governor. But now I come to defend the interests of my master, the king and the monarch of the eternities of heaven. This is when blessings begin. When God reconfigures men, then he begins to give them badges. The things that make for wealth transfer, it's not give, it shall be given unto you. God gives some of them with the invasion. He said, I have anointed Bezeli, the son of Uri, to do all cunning artificial by wisdom. And what Moses saw on the mountain, Bezeli was on earth. And he was able to download it because there was a wisdom given to him. There's a wisdom that God gives to the last day army that the world cannot despise. You will stay in your house, you do something, and the whole world look for you. That's what makes for wealth transfer. Not give, it shall be given unto you. There are some that God gives a name. And then suddenly they say, Lawrence Oyo. And then he puts a chant on the internet. And they say, Lawrence Oyo. And then somebody hears the chant in Afghanistan. And they say, what did you do? Who are you? Who are you? My name is Lawrence Oyo. A.A. Allen went to heaven too many times. And when he shows up before a demon, he won't say, get out in the name of Jesus. He say, I am A.A. Allen. I am A.A. Allen. I am A.A. Allen. Did you not read that the demons that fought the sons of Skiva, they say, Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are thou? 
God gives you a name, that name can open doors. I am Michael Oroko. It's enough. It's an investment. Ah. You see, we are about to fly now. If you can more time comes, begin. The third thing God gives you is a grace. Oh, I told my friend Lawrence Sawyer. I say you are not a prophet. You are not an evangelist. You are not an apostle. You are not a teacher. You are not a pastor. You are divine heaven strategy for buffering the weakness of the church. There is what they call the SWAT team that is picked out of the marine in the army of the U.S. They come to remedy the challenge. Every time it chants, a prophet's eye open. When it chants, an apostle is threatened. When it chants, a teacher is inspired. That man cannot be a prophet. He's a strategy. God brings such men into the body to buffer the move of the spirit. That's why you don't know what to call the chant. Even the devil don't know. Can I tell you something? Right now, they are studying him in hell. Because they want to understand what's happening. What takes an apostle three years to make out of a believer? He does it in five minutes. How come? How can a prostitute come and listen to your chant and become a prophet? It takes more than 10 years for a prophet to be born. What is it about a chant? It's a strategy. But he found his name in Zion. Most of you have your name written on Christus in eternity. But you have not risen in prayer. You have not risen. That's why you will cheat men, lie to men, deceive men for money. If you find your name, men will look for you. A name, a grace. And the top thing is an influence. Influence is a sector in the spirit realm. It causes the laws of creation to bow. To bow to people. The Bible said daily, men joined themselves to David until his host became like the host of God. It's an influence. Men will run from afar to submit to your vision. It's an influence. These are the things that make for wealth transfer. Not give, it shall be given to you. But the church, the body, must because a, become a mystical dimension.